Today, desperate MAGA Republicans are holding a rare public hearing regarding the failed and unpopular impeachment inquiry into President Biden. And though at the time of this recording, the hearing is not over, both the hearing and the impeachment effort overall are not doing well. And if you don't believe me, just ask Newsmax and Fox News. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, again, the, we see the Biden impeachment inquiry effort just limping on, even though it's mortally injured. It's suffering a Rasputinian death. Uh, and yet MAGA Republicans won't let go of it because it's basically the only thing they've got. They have invested so much of their political capital into trying to politically injure the president since they took the majority in January 2023. And even though an increasing number of reports suggest that uh, Republicans are really unhappy with how this has turned out, and they think that the leaders of this particular clown show, James Comer, Jim Jordan, Jason Smith, have just completely failed utterly and have embarrassed the party, um, for whatever reason, they're just allowed to continue. So this is a rare public hearing. We haven't had one in weeks upon weeks upon weeks. And it's not going well for MAGA Republicans. Now, just to provide some context about this particular hearing before we play the clips, uh, this is what uh, ABC has reported. The House Oversight and Judiciary Committee committees are holding an impeachment hearing on Capitol Hill and growing uh, amid growing scrutiny of Republicans' ongoing probe of President Biden. Tony Bobolinsky and Jason Galanis, both former associates of Hunter Biden, not Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, are scheduled to testify. Bobolinsky's in the hearing room. Galanis will participate via Zoom. This is true. We've seen him participate via Zoom so far from the Alabama prison where he is serving a 14-year prison sentence for securities fraud. House Democrats um, have brought in Lev Parnas, who was an associate of Rudy Giuliani during the Trump administration in which Giuliani and Trump were trying to dig up dirt related to Hunter and Joe Biden with respect to Ukraine. So that is the stage set for this. And again, at the time of recording, the hearing itself is not over. We haven't heard from Jared Moskowitz, Jasmine Crockett. I'm looking forward to hearing from them in particular. Um, but the initial results are not looking good for the GOP. And again, don't you don't have to believe me, since I'm an unapologetically partisan Democrat. Let's look at Newsmax and Fox News, and uh, we'll unpack it all together. A lot of this evidence is situational. It's circumstantial. What does the Oversight Committee need right now to complete its investigation, to fill in these holes? We know that you guys have subpoenaed for these bank records as part of that. Well, I would say sit tight and let the rest of the hearing unfold. Uh, there's more that's going to come out. Uh, but what I will tell you, the first hour or so of this, of this hearing has been devastating to the Biden family. So devastating that even Newsmax is saying Newsmax, who watched this hearing unfold that first hour that Byron Donalds here is saying is so devastating. And they're like, well, actually, at best, it's circumstantial evidence and there are holes in your claims that you need to fill in order to make the case that the president has committed an impeachable offense. So you can see immediately that there's a disconnect between the guy who's desperate to peddle this notion and his sympathizers in right wing media who want the notion to be true or at least sellable to their audience. But even they're like, I don't know, it's 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 not going well so far. Uh, here is Jim Jordan as well, I believe, on Newsmax. Um, uh, and again, Jim Jordan, who is one of the grand inquisitors of the Biden impeachment inquiry effort. He is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Again, Newsmax, none too pleased with this. Uh, is impeachment the next step? Are you going to hold a vote? On the House floor, I know it's up to Mike Johnson, but the margins, Congressman, you lost Kevin McCarthy. Ken Buck left last week. George Santos was ousted. Unless you get Democratic votes, this is going to be real tough. So it, it kind of seems like you're chasing your tail at this point because this is not going to well, go anywhere. No, fair question. And we got a, you know, we got a small majority. Everyone understands that, not just on this issue, but on a host of issues. Our job is under the Constitution is to do oversight of the executive branch. We are doing that. We're going to continue to do that. There's no time limit in the Constitution. So there you go. You have a Newsmax host saying that you are chasing your tail because even though they technically have a majority right now, in theory, if the case against President Biden was so persuasive, they have the numbers to formally impeach the president. You don't need a supermajority. You don't need any Democrat votes. All you need is every Republican to vote or just at least one more than the Democrats who would vote in opposition. So why is it that so many Republicans are publicly and or privately distancing themselves 
from this impeachment effort, Jim Jordan, because your razor thin margin shouldn't matter. You have a partisan political motive. And if the evidence supports it, you're golden. You're golden. I mean, Democrats were able to impeach Donald Trump twice. Now, I would say for infinitely more substantive reasons, but they didn't need Republican votes to do it. Why are you all in such a pickle about this? Could it be that the evidence is so weak that even those with a partisan political motive are simply unwilling to vote for an impeachment? Could that be the reason? Seems so. This was also on the Fox Propaganda Network earlier today, just prior to the hearing. Uh, a couple of things here. Uh, Hunter Biden popped into our ears, what, two months ago, was it? They're like, Hunter Biden's on Capitol Hill. We're like, why? <laughs> then they took the live shot, indeed he was. Maybe that happens today, maybe he doesn't. Abby Lowell calls it all a carnival sideshow. But remember that question there about Jason Schell. What Republicans are trying to show is that there were no services rendered for the money that came in. And that's a big part of what this hearing is out, uh, and then intended to do. At the end of this week, Congress is due to go into recess for another two weeks. And I, I do think that in some ways it just feels like they keep doing the same hearing over and over again. And people are starting to wonder, at some point, do you fish or cut bait? and mm -hmm. do something about a vote or not and move on to the general election. Okay. Again, the Fox propaganda network is fed up with this, okay? What does this say? You've lost Dana Perino. Dana Perino, who used to be President Bush's press secretary, somebody who is frequently on the five, who is clearly a diehard Republican, and though she's not as openly crazy as Jeanine Pirro or Jesse Waters, she is a Trumper. She clearly prefers Trump to President Biden. And she's just like, listen, we're going in circles. This is the same hearing over and over again. When you lose Fox, what does that say about this year? I have more than a year, you know, this 14 month long effort to politically injure the president. What does that say? Um, let's see one more clip I'll point out here. This is um, I'm not sure if I played this one before. This one was actually from last week, just um, discussing the overall impeachment effort. This is also on the Fox propaganda network. You have Stuart Varney, you have Shannon Bream. Uh, this is what they have to say about it. Right. Turning to the president, is the Biden impeachment now unlikely? I think it's increasingly unlikely, especially with another GOP House member who, by the way, was a vote against this, Ken Buck, saying that he's out even sooner than expected. I think Republicans are trying to be realistic with the margins that they have. And the speaker seems to be signaling like, no, nah, we maybe are not going to push this to the floor for a vote. So we'll have to see. But they're still going to have that public hearing next week, which they invited Hunter to, which remember he had. Right. So, again, even Shannon Bream, who has you know, ends with the Republican Party, right? Fox and has a close association with the GOP. They're being told their sources are suggesting that just the votes aren't there, which obviously, even if the votes were there, it would die an ugly death in the Senate because you need a Senate supermajority to successfully convict and remove the president from power. And we've talked about the polling. The polling has consistently shown over the past several months that whatever, you know, um, benefit of the doubt that the American people were, in my opinion, irrationally willing to give the GOP, uh, that has evaporated. Both of Donald Trump's impeachment efforts were more popular and more supported by more Americans than this one by Joe Biden or against Joe Biden by Republicans. Now, again, it's entirely possible something can change. It's entirely possible that Republicans are saying, listen, we'll just drag this out in the hopes that we can, at various points, prop this thing back up, you know, fish it out of the closet, so to speak, and, and make it, um, you know, basically try to inflict some sort of temporary political injury against the president. Um, but historically speaking, failed impeachments or even successful impeachments tend to galvanize the impeached person's political support. So I don't see how this ends in anything other than disaster for the GOP. And Democrats have a moral and political obligation to hit them as hard as possible on this. And there have been some great moments from the first half of the impeachment inquiry, which we will discuss in other videos. And I can't wait for the second half to unfold. Let me know what you think in the comments.